Hello, North Central Washington, and welcome to Networked, a variety show where we bring you the latest news and insights on technology, education, and innovation in North Central Washington. I'm your host, Jenny Rojanasatian, Executive Director of NCW Tech Alliance. Our mission at the Tech Alliance is to bring people and resources together while supporting entrepreneurs, STEM education, and technolo technology access in North Central Washington. Our nonprofit has spent over two decades supporting innovation and growth in our region, particularly around education. We run 40 events and programs that provide educational resources and connections for the community. At NCW Tech Alliance, we are committed to working to expand access to digital and technology skills for all youth in our region, and we have the opportunity to lead this work through our role as the co-director of the Apple STEM Network a cross-sector partnership that includes K-12 schools, community and technical colleges, universities, local businesses, and community-based organizations. A partner in our work from the very start of the Apple STEM Network has been Wenatchee Valley College. Today, I'm excited for the opportunity to highlight the work happening at Wenatchee Valley College and to introduce you to Dr. Famous Harrison, the newly appointed president of Wenatchee Valley College. And welcome to Networked, where I am really excited to be spending the next 30 minutes with Dr. Famous Harrison, the new president of Wenatchee Valley College. Thank you so much for joining me. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Well, first of all, welcome to the region. I know you uh, started your role in January, so we're just incredibly thrilled to have a leader like you come in and take this really important role. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, now, I know that you've been doing probably a lot of outreach the last couple of months getting to know the community. Um, so for our audience, I'd love to start maybe by introducing yourself and a little bit of your background so they can get to know you. Wonderful. Yes, I've actually been in higher education for over 30 years. It's taken me a while to find myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I was going to go into education. My mom was a K-12 um, educator, okay. and then I had opportunity while I was in college to find my own roots and had the opportunity to work at a community college 30 plus years ago. And I really appreciate the mission of being responsive to the needs of your community, being able to create opportunities for upward mobility. Mm -hmm. um, so I started there um, at the Seattle Colleges and over my tenure I've worked at multiple different community colleges and universities. I've done my undergraduate at University of Washington, my Masters at Seattle Pacific University and my doctorate at Oregon State University. So you've been on kind of the West Coast in education. Um, I'm a kook, so I won't hold it against you that you were a husky. <laughs> you know, it's good to have that that fun rivalry. Um, but you know, uh, community college. I'll, I'll echo from my own perspective. I got my uh, my two year at Clark College in Vancouver, Washington. Right. Uh, a community college experience is uh, can be so intimate, really um, a lot more smaller groups, and provides so many offerings for students. I can, um, I can see why you must love being in that environment. Absolutely, having yeah. the experience to work at large institutions and smaller institutions, the ability to respond and meet students where they are, mm -hmm. to support them, why they ha might have competing priorities, whether it's work um, or family life is, is important. And then also another area that's really valuable about community colleges and public universities that are really rooted in their community. Mm -hmm. How do you balance working with advancing education and theory, but also addressing workforce and economic needs? So um, that's another advantage that I realized early on, that in addition to teaching, in addition to um, being able to support the communities I represent, but also to support workforce and economic development, meeting the employer's needs and ensuring that we have um, the pipeline of, of talent for high demand industries as well as jobs and again trying to keep people local as well. Well that's so critical here in our community because Wenatchee Valley College is the educational, the higher ed educational institute really uh, providing those opportunities to skill a workforce and stay local. And I know in the second set we might talk a little bit more about Wenatchee Valley College program, so I'll, I'll maybe pause for, on that for now. 
I'd love to learn a little bit about what attracted you to the role um, of, of president at Wenatchee Valley College. Well, I've been familiar with Wenatchee Valley College my whole career in higher education. I've been involved with the community and technical colleges. I was the Northern Region Chair for Central Washington University, which serves a large part of the state, and then also to through different roles, just visiting Wenatchee and knowing people that have worked at the college. So okay. I, I have past colleagues that I've known over a quarter of a century of longer that have worked at the college. So I, I always had aspirations about Wenatchee. Um, I will admit that um, coming last October, I was really surprised how much it has advanced and has grown mm -hmm. over the last decade. I've been out of the region for uh, at least seven years. So it's been a while. Um, but just knowing how the work balance, the opportunity to be engaged in the community, smaller community that's really connected and supporting each other, I really believe in the collective ownership, mm. the community-centered approach. Um, so that was something that really um, attracted me to this opportunity. And then also, too, something that you already um, you know, talked a little bit about is Wenatchee Valley College serves a, a large region. 10,000 square miles. So to be able to support um, creating opportunities for socioeconomic upward mobility for residents as well as supporting industries are critical. So there was just a lot of things that attracted me to this opportunity. That um, footprint is massive. Correct. And you don't just have a campus here in Wenatchee, there's other another campus of the college as well. Absolutely. So we serve three counties that go all the way to Canada. We have an OMAC campus, which is a comprehensive campus. But again, our objective is to meet students and community members where, we, where they are. So we also um, partner with the Colville Tribe, and we have programs there as well as different parts throughout our region. So again, how do we create opportunities for individuals to advance their quality of life, and as well as what are the needs? Um, another area that we're really focusing on is credentials. I, I, creating credentials that aligns with employers' need, but then also opportunities where they can be stackable and build upon. For example, there's a shortage of health care when you think of mm -hmm. you know, um, registered nurses that's, or, or pharmacy techs, right? So that, that, those are some of the programs that we offer, but you can also, like with our pharmacy tech program, you can have a one-year um, program, a two-year program. For our registered nursing program, we have multiple different tracks where you can get your back, um, bachelor's degree as well, while also working in addressing the needs here in our region as well. Yeah, because it's really a, a rare that a student can just only go to school, right? I mean, that's not an option for a lot of students of any age, whether coming out of a K-12 system or returning into a new career opportunity later in life. They really often have uh, families, work obligations, or other sets of circumstances. Um, tell us a little bit, I want to hit on the credential piece for just a second. Can you explain for someone who may not understand what that means, how you provide more than just a degree? There's some other options. Because I think people think, college, I'm getting a degree. Right. And a credential is a type of component of a degree. OK. So when I use the word credentials, mm -hmm. how do I meet you where you're at? You know, when you think about our community, we have students that are coming back to college or going to college for many different reasons. So the traditional world of thinking of 18 to 22 is really not the reality. A lot of people go to college for many different reasons. Some, if they're trying to you know, transition and get their GED, others that are trying to get certificates or also trying to advance the ability to be um, nimble and understand how do we serve students and how do we ensure that we have the right programs and services to meet them where they are and, and celebrating their successes. One of the things that's really exciting is we have so many talented faculty, staff, and administrators that are from this community. They are passionate, they care. So the ability to meet with students where they are, small class sizes, mm -hmm. and giving them that personal um, attention to ensure that they can be successful 
as well as balancing their other priorities. Um, so again, when we talk about being student-centered, mm -hmm. one of our focus is to also transition to be what we call community-centered because our students come from the community yeah. as well. I love that. Um, we're going to head to a commercial break here in just a second, um, but I'd love for to hear a little bit about your top priorities. I, I imagine um, you've got a lot of priorities for an organization that's serving so many, but you know, in particularly in regards to creating that inclusive environment, what are kind of your top priorities right now for students and staff? Well, the first part is being an active listener, mm -hmm. understanding the different obstacles and challenges. One of the things that was a reality is the pandemic has caused trauma, not only to our students and our employees, faculty, staff, but the, the community. So understand what is needed right now, what type of resources, what type of services, and then also on top of that, how do we align our programs, our services, our offerings for our students now and in the post-pandemic era? So that's critically important for us to be intentional. Um, and how we do that is listen, how we also do that is by gathering information from our community as well as our campus to understand how do we look at what programs we offer, when we should offer them, what type of modality, mm -hmm. as well as what wraparound resources, whether it's from the campus or the community that we can mobilize to really support um, our students as well as our, our, our employees. But again, um, having the ability to listen to actually gather information and make evidence-based decisions based on that feedback is, is critical and it's ever-changing. I mean, if you think about the pandemic, this is something we have been experienced um, and, you know, obviously during our career. Right. Um, so how do we ensure that we provide the best learning inclusive community for everyone? And then also to understand what resources and services we can serve we, we need to provide to serve our diverse community of, of employees as well as, as residents. And welcome back to part two of Network TV today. I've been on air with Dr. Harrison, the president of Wenatchee Valley College, who joined the organization this year. Dr. Harrison, I learned so much in that first segment. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank Having you. Having a lot of fun uh, connecting. So we're going to have to, there's probably going to need to be another episode here in the future. Um, but now I want to kind of dive in. We talked about the challenges of the pandemic and how you're really listening to the community and adapting. Um, what are some of the kind of challenges in terms of promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion that are happening right now? Right. That's a continuous improvement process. Um, Wenatchee Valley College serves a diverse community that, again, as I mentioned area, earlier, serves a large territory. And we want to be an inclusive environment and meeting students where they are, but also create a welcoming and inclusive environment for faculty and staff. Mm -hmm. um, we are investing in a lot of resources related to our diversity, equity, and inclusion. I'm in the process of right now of hiring an executive director that's really going to lead a team to build upon on our existing efforts. We also have a diversity center. We offer quite a few diversity programs and we also reach out and are involved with many different community stakeholders related to all different types of um, backgrounds. So inclusion, we want to make sure that every segment of our community feels represented and that they're supported and we create an environment that's inclusive for them to participate as well as engage and contribute to our growth-minded learning community. Mm. So it's about welcoming and also allowing participation. So it's kind of a two-sided two approach when you're thinking about it. Yes, when I talk about growth-minded learning yeah. organization is recognizing that everyone has lived experiences. Mm -hmm. How do you cr create an environment where everyone's included? And then as we learn, we can better support not only our employees and students, but also the community. So it's a continuous improvement model, mm -hmm. but it really in, it is critically important for us to create safe spaces for everyone mm -hmm. and really appreciate diverse perspectives, opinions, um, which is a, a key component when you think of inclusion. Yeah. You know, I, 
that you guys have been very involved with the Apple STEM network over the years. In fact, um, the NCW Tech Alliance and Wenatchee Valley College were kind of the anchoring partners in launching that work. And I know that you've done so much to really support specific and STEM careers Correct. through the Apple STEM network and all of the programs, which also has a big emphasis on diversity mm -hmm. um, when we think about whether that's um, Latino, Latinx, women in these careers. Right. Can you tell me maybe a little bit about um, how you see STEM careers and your advice for students or even parents of students of all ages? to encourage them there. Absolutely. Well, STEM is critically important. And one thing I will share with you, this is exciting. We are investing in building a center for technology and innovation. And it's going to be an inclusive environment that not only advances our programs, but also creates more opportunities for the community to be involved. Um, but when it comes to the STEM um, careers, it's important for us to also work with industries as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so sometimes if individuals does, don't have a background in science, technology, or any of the STEM fields, right. they, they, they become a little intimidated. So one of the things that's really excited for us is our faculty um, have advisory committees. They work with industries. Our goal is to also engage students as early as possible create opportunities for students to come on campus you know so when you think of the pipeline of education yeah. right when is it too early to actually look at stem it's never too early right, <laughs> right. so I love how, that. Do, how yes. do we how do we meet students where they are right. and then also to how do we introduce them as again when we we're talking about diversity equity and inclusion earlier when you're talking about um, underrepresented groups that m might not be um, you know, be involved in STEM compared to other groups, it's really important for them to be involved and to be engaged. So we do have some really impressive um, programs that really focus on, um, you know, underserved, um, um, underrepresented groups, mm -hmm. as well as trying to encourage all of our students and community members to support STEM-related programs. Um. I, I love what you are doing there. I'm very excited about the new technology space mm -hmm. as well, let me say. Um, you know, uh, in terms of STEM, I think there's also been a misconception that to be a STEM professional, you need a PhD, yeah. right? There's been this, oh, a STEM degree, you're, you know, you're going all the way through the process, but you've got a variety of certifications or two-year degrees that are in STEM fields. Absolutely, so when they talk about meeting people where they are, if you're the first in your family to go to college or to even explore college, you might have other priorities, other, um, you know, whether it's family, whether it's work. Mm -hmm. So how do we create opportunities where you can advance, learn about STEM, but also have different types of credentials? So we do have short-term programs, we have mm -hmm. certificates, we have one-year programs, two years, we have transitional programs that can go from um, you know, associate's degree to a four-year degree. So again, it's really important early on to not um, limit st students, um, you know, possibilities, but also meet them where they are. Yeah. And then also it's important for them to learn about the, f the fields themselves. Yeah. So it goes both ways, right? Yeah. There's the education, there's the theory. The practical experience is critical. That's where industries come in. Okay. That's where working with you know, the STEM fields so they can learn about opportunities. And then also to where there's those soft handoffs, right? Where there's opportunities for internships, for, you know, I would like to see the expansion of, of working with the K-12 systems about how do we look at partnering together to introduce students to other opportunities related to STEM. Okay. And then also to create wraparound resources to support them um, when, when you're thinking about sciences. and in the educational field. Um, uh, that makes a lot of sense too about the, the connection that the college has done so well in terms of industry partners, advi advisory boards, Correct. because you don't want someone to pursue a, a, any type of college and then not have it be applicable into the, into the workforce, right? That's where people get dissatisfied and say, what did I spend my money on or why, right? It needs to be applied learning. Well, more than applied learning, yeah. We want our graduates to be the top choice. Ah, and when you think of I the, like uh, the yeah. top choice, 
you can have a degree but if you don't, or, your, or credential, but if you don't have practical experience, you're not going to be as competitive mm -hmm. and you're probably not ready to meet different industries' needs. So when we can look at our program and work with industries, work with you know, um, tech fields or different industries, then our students are not only understanding the theory, the, the research, but they're also getting the, the practical experience. And on that same note, um, when Natchez Valley College, we even have programs where our students are also involved in research, which is very unusual for, for, uh, for community colleges. Um, well, you've got um, an in incredible uh, college uh, developing um, so many innovative programs. The nursing program comes to mind when you think about competitive, like your your graduates are probably being hired before they even finish their degrees in the nursing field. Y yeah. Yes, and we have other programs. And mm -hmm. again, what are the needs in our region, and how do how does Wenatchee Valley College partner with them? Mm -hmm. So another program that we're really focusing is our pharmacy tech program. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about the shortage of healthcare and technology in the healthcare field, so how do we be able to work with rural communities? Um, and be able to provide opportunities for students to support our region, but also to people that really care about the region that are going to stay local. One of our objectives and goals is as we're preparing the next generation of leaders, we also want them to be committed to this community as well. Mm -hmm. So again, when you think about that collective ownership approach of working with education and industries and tech, as well as innovation, right? Um, that's, that's critical as well. Now, Dr. Harrison, how can the community um, get involved in what's happening on campus? Or any uh, kind of final thoughts to them on, on getting involved and learning about the college? Absolutely. Well, first, you should visit our website. Okay. We have so many different programs yeah. um, that are listed on our website. And then also, too, we're here for the public good. So we welcome the opportunity for community stakeholders to share opportunities where we can partner with them in the, in the public, as well as as we're working on our transition. As you know, I'm, I'm new. Um, we're also, this is the last year of our current strategic plan. Um, so we're working on our next plan, which will be from 24 to 29. And we want to make sure that it intentionally represents our, the community we serve, and the vision collectively we have for the future. How do we do that? We have to listen, we have to meet with diverse stakeholders internally as well as externally and be able to deliver. So any opportunity where we can participate, whether community members want to come to campus for events and or to if there's things that we should be aware of and we should be involved in in the community, we would like to know that as well. I love that. Well, thank you for your leadership. I'm so excited about the next chapter at Wenatchee Valley College with you at the helm. Uh, thank you for coming on air, and thank you to our audience for tuning in. I encourage you to check out all that Wenatchee Valley College has to offer on their website, and we'll see you here next week on Network TV.